So this is the Samsung Galaxy A51. Now, according to Samsung, this phone has awesome screen, awesome camera, long lasting battery life. Those are the things they're using to market this phone. Awesome screen, awesome camera, long lasting battery life and all that. So in this video, we're going to check out if this is actually true. All right. So starting out here with the build quality and the design, this phone is actually made from plastic, which is something that is expected from a phone of this caliber. And the material that is used to design this phone is still the same material that was used in last year's Galaxy A series lineup. Samsung calls this glass stick, which means plastic with a little bit of glass fused into it. The design of the phone is very beautiful, I like it. One-handed operation is on point here. Now, if you are in a sunny place or you are in a well-lit environment or where there is light, you are going to be having this kind of like colorish reflection coming out of the design at the back, which is the same thing I experienced with the Galaxy A50 from last year that I reviewed on the channel here. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave it up here in the YouTube card or down in the description, all right? On the spec sheet, the base model starts at 4GB RAM and you can also get a model that has 6GB of RAM, 128GB in built memory. The configuration you get in terms of the memory actually depends on the region you are buying it from. This year's Galaxy A51 is being powered by the Samsung Exynos 9611, which Samsung says is faster than the Exynos 9610 that ran on the Galaxy A50 from last year. It still runs on the Mali G72 graphics card, which is the same kind of graphics card that ran on last year's Galaxy A50. I've been playing games with it, I haven't really noticed any spectacular difference in terms of the gaming performance from last year's Galaxy A50. But what I have noticed is that the battery on this phone lasts longer in terms of gaming than last year's Galaxy A50. Now, I don't know why, because both devices have 4000 mAh battery, but the Galaxy A51 is lasting longer in terms of gaming than the Galaxy A50. So I guess it has to do with that Exynos 9611, which um, manages battery better than the Exynos 9610. Okay, let's face it. Even if you don't like Samsung phones, even if you are an iOS user, even if you are an Apple fanboy, once you look at a Samsung phone, you just will not be able to help it but fall in love with the display. Samsung is the king of displays when it comes to mobile displays. Like, no phone has a better display right now in the market than Samsung phones. Even the mid-range phones still have better displays than most flagship phones from other brands. It's a super AMOLED display, 6.5 inches in size, full HD display. Even on a very sunny day, this display still works fine outside. Like, I took it out. One of the things I look for personally in a display when I'm buying a phone is the fact that I have to be able to use the display on a sunny day or outdoors. And this display actually meets that criteria. Now, to make this display even more fluid and even more smoother, it runs on the Samsung One UI 2.0, which I think is very, very awesome. Now, One UI is really, really nice. A lot of people don't really like One UI, but I think One UI is good because it packs a lot of features. And with this very device, the One UI 2.0 on it can actually allow you to do things like turn off the device without actually pressing the physical um, power button because the power button on this phone is mappable. With One UI, you can map the power button on this device to control different things. Like on my own device here right now, it's mapped to control Bixby. It came like that by default. I haven't remapped it yet, but you can actually remap your power button to, to do different things instead of just using it to turn off the phone and on it. So this display plus one UI is a very good marriage. I've actually enjoyed using it. The only downside about this display I don't like is the fact that they had to use a cunning Gorilla Glass 3 to coat it. So which means this display might not be as durable as you might think it should be. Now compared to other phones that are a bit cheaper than it, like say the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8 is coated with Corning Gorilla Glass 5, you know, so Samsung should have taken this thing a step further to make this display more durable. But even that is not a deal breaker for me because I hardly dropped my phones. The biggest upgrade in the Galaxy A51 is in the cameras. Now this phone comes with a quad camera setup against the triple camera that came in the Galaxy A50. And there's an all new camera design which makes the Galaxy A series look like its elder brothers, the Galaxy S20 series. For those of you who don't realize it, Samsung has actually done a massive design overhaul amongst all its electronics devices. So the main lens is a whooping 48 megapixel sensor against the 25 megapixel that we had on last year's Galaxy A50. And then we also have a 12 megapixel wide angle camera, we have a 5 megapixel macro lens which is a new addition, and then we also have a 5 megapixel depth sensor. And also we now have a new 32 megapixel selfie camera which is sitting in that hole on the display which in my opinion is better than the teardrop notch from last year. Most people that have reviewed this phone are of the opinion that the cameras are not that good. Now first of all, before you talk about how good the camera is or the cameras are, you might actually want to consider the fact that this phone competes in a particular price segment or it competes in a particular um, segment of the market which is the mid-range section. 
So you might not be expecting the cameras of this phone to perform as good as the iPhones or maybe the Samsung Galaxy S lineup. But I've been able to take some very awesome pictures with this phone. Now the bokeh mode or the portrait mode is really really good. The selfie cameras are okay. If the cameras are the reason why you are buying this phone, I think you will actually be making a good choice here. One of the issues I experienced with these cameras is the fact that the color profiles are not consistent. Sometimes you shoot an image, you get a particular color, you still reshoot the same image again, you get a particular color temperature, you know. Now this is something that is common with almost every budget phone. From the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8 series that I tested, the Note 8 and the Note 8 Pro, they had this issue. The techno phones that I've tested here on the channel also have these issues. So this is a consistent thing with budget or mid-range phones. Color profiles are not usually on point. But what I can tell you is that you can click on the screen here to watch other videos that have been uploaded here on the channel, all right? My name is Kingsley. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new and turn on the bell icon. Who knows? The next content might be more interesting than this one. But I'll catch you again in the next one.